So I rang me old mate and and he said, yeah, yeah, they were unreal. They were incredible. Some of you remember a few months ago, the gearbox heat exchanger sprung a leak and we ended up with salt water in the gearbox. Well, the new one's just arrived. I've got some new fittings for it. So time to put it in. We're going out to the boat. Well, we're heading out to the boat. I've got a set of verniers, got a tape measure, got some forms. We're going out to measure the sails because we're thinking about getting sails. Because the last few times we've been out, they've just been breaking and tearing and tearing. And I reckon if we get a big blow, they're gonna just tear apart. Um, because we're going to measure the heights of things of like uh, the luff and the leech and this so if we need to we've got a bit of rope or VB cord I've learned to unwind it as it's wound in the factory otherwise it gets so knotted no one had any good stuff so I had to buy this cheaper stuff but it'll do for the time being So, we went to town, because I like to shop locally when I can, and talked to the sail maker. And the first guy just said, oh yeah, yeah, we can make a sail. It'll, yeah, it'll take a couple of months, a bit busy at the moment. And it's gonna cost you X amount of dollars, right? He told me the number and I thought, well, that's, that's a lot. And his attitude was a bit ho-hum. Um, so I asked around town and people didn't give shining reports. They said he took a lot longer, that everything took longer and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, oh, I'll go check someone else out. And there was no one else locally, so I made a few phone calls. And same sort of attitude. Uh, once, I think as soon as you mention you're a cruiser, um, they know you, you're not after an expensive sale. So, no one really seemed interested. They wanted to, all this Kevlar, um, crazy bilateral, all this stuff. And no one really seemed that keen to give me a written quote for four sales for our cruising boat in, in cruising weight. Um, cloth, in cruising style cloth, um, yeah they were just, they didn't seem very positive so I ran a couple more, same outcome, it was all about racing and it was all about all the whiz bang stuff and I mean as a cruiser you don't need whiz bang and you generally don't want to, you'd rather spend your money on beautiful destinations than whiz bang sales. So, to cut a lot, very long story short, um, I did some more research online and I thought, well, let's try out of Australia. So, 
back in my mind, I remember that some friends from another YouTube channel had got some new sales and they couldn't speak highly enough about the particular company they used. So I rang me old mate and and he said, yeah, yeah, they were unreal. They were incredible. Um, everything was right. Their attitude, the price, delivery times, correspondence, ease of working with them. Um, everything was right. So I did some more sleuthing and there are so many YouTube sailing channels that have used these people. Um, non-YouTube sailing channel, just there were heaps of people and every single person's review was absolutely shining. Everyone couldn't praise them highly enough, so I thought, let's give them a call. So I sent an email off to Precision Sales um, here in British Columbia, Canada. Um, and I sent an email off and their sales guy got back to me within minutes. Um, it's very welcoming. And over the course of one or two emails, we discussed um, about maybe doing a partnership thing. So f I'm going to disclose straight up that um, these sales aren't free by any, any stretch of the imagination, but they're looking after us um, in price-wise. So yeah, we got a great discount from them. Um, even before that, even before they had given me a discount, they had given me a full quotation overnight for all four sales, incredible quotation that had every bit of information I ever needed. It was all in Australian dollars, it was all freight wasn't an issue, everything was included in this quote. Not only that, there were links there to any bit of information I needed. They have hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos showing every aspect of the sales and and every aspect of using the sales, measuring and, and etc. I had a couple of queries, so I sent off an email and we arranged to have a phone uh, for them to ring us, uh, which they did promptly within half an hour. So we had a long phone conversation. And after that was when they sent the quote up. Uh, after that, we, Wendy and I discussed it and we thought, yeah, we're gonna go ahead, even if we don't end up partnering with, with these people. Um, they've been just incredible and they just love cruises so um, cruises aren't the most generally I'm generally speaking here cruises aren't the most prof profitable customers um, we like our bargains so anyway they um, they seem to love cruises so well, they sent me back some, a quote for me to go over and a whole heap of information. Wendy and I discussed it and we sent an email back to say yes, we'd like to go further with this. So they sharpened their pencil and they sent back a new quote which was incredible. Um, and we've decided to go ahead. Now before we just made the final decision, we had another long phone conversation. They rang us promptly. It was all organized, all online. Um, the appointment was set up and we spoke to them about some other questions I had. I didn't know whether to go for for tan sails or white, you know, that classic boat look. And, and they explained the differences in the cloth and longevity. Um, so that decision was pretty easy. Then we discussed things like loose-footed mains, loose-footed mizzens, why, pros and cons. We discussed whether to go fully batten main or semi batten main, partially batten main, um, and answered all my questions. And then we want to go from having a Yankee uh, headsaw, which is a small high-cut headsaw, to 
a Genoa, say 135% Genoa, because I want we need a bit more sail area up front, and that'll help us point into the wind a bit better anyway. Um, so anyway, after all, I had all these questions and everything was answered, and it was all so smooth and and just beautifully done that we definitely decided to go ahead. We um, we got the ball rolling, sent them a deposit, and now we're at the next stage, um, which is measuring up. We took a week off between um, between sending the deposit and now because I just wanted to make sure that we were doing the right thing and I did some more research and yeah, these guys are unbelievable. So, all right, that's enough about what's happened up to now. We've got some forms to fill in which shows you all about how to measure your sales. There's also countless videos they've got to show you every aspect of measuring sales, which I've watched every single video. Um, so you've just, yeah, I've got verniers, we've got our cloth tape measure, which doesn't stretch. Um, and we're about to go through step by step and they ask for photos along the way so that they can get a good idea of um, what you're actually measuring and how the layout is on, on your boat. Now we're lucky, it's a Hans Christian 43. It's a standard boat. Um, everything on it is standard. So apart from being a catch, um, every fitting is standard. So it's pretty easy. So let's get on with measuring some sails and some, all the bits. It's, um, it's so, it's made it so easy. <laughs> right, gotcha. This is page one of their form. Um, it's got all the normal stuff at the top then. Um, we've got to take some photos of our furler and sail measurements and a side profile of the boat with mast. So we can do the side profile of the boat with mast. We happen to pick the rolliest day in the whole anchorage to come out here and measure. Um, but anyway, a side profile, um, get photos of the boat, da da da. Uh, our designers may request you to remeasure or take photo of measurements if they're needed. Um, then they say that there's their videos online, which I've watched. Um, things you'll need tape measure, measurement form, camera, and calipers. Um, right, we start. Number one, start measuring. A is measure your existing head saw. So they show you the head saw here and what the pieces are. You've got your luff, your leech, and your foot. So that's what we've got to measure now. Now, it's no, if we picked a day, it was zero wind, so we can hoist our head saw and do it on board. Or you could easily just take your head saw off, lay it out on the park, and measure it up. But because there's zero wind, we're going to do it here on the boat. So we're at the pointy end. Um, now as you can see, we have, don't have a furler on the head saw yet. We do have the furler for it at home, and that's um, food for another video coming up soon. We have fitted the furler to the staysail, uh, the inner fore stay. So we've got all the furler information there. So we're just going to, the job I hate the most after every day of sailing is putting this bag on the head saw. So soon, once the furler's on, we won't have to worry about that. But anyway, we're going to take the bag off. We're going to hoist the head saw. We're going to attach the tape measure to the head uh, of the sail and hoist it up and take our three measurements, or two measurements from the head and then one measurement at the bottom for the foot. Then the next project, once we've got the new sails, is to build a proper stack pack. So that we don't have to do all this. Right, so that's our head to a halyard. Which is... And the reason you don't know which one it is, is because... I'm on the head saw and 
staysail and both the same colour halyards. All our halyards are white. Every line on board, apart from one, is white. Which I like. So do I. There you go, babe. As you can see, we've got a pretty high cut headsail here. Um, we've got a six foot strop on it. Um, that's the way it's always been, haven't changed it. So we're just measuring to the, to here, which is 12, one, two, one, five. 12 meters. Right, do you want to uh, drop that down when? Now, because we can't reach the clue, because it's a third of the way up the mast. Right up there. We've got to lower the head still a bit. Oh, look at the batfish. <gasps> really? A little, a little oh! On it. oh, I haven't seen those for so long. It's got a remora on it too. Oh, it's that's beautiful. Like. That's so nice to see. As you can see, I can't reach the clue to measure it, so we've got to drop the... Um, Drop the heady down a bit. Oi. Bit closer now. <laughs> it's an interesting uh, task. So a bit of weight on it, just to um, get it right. And that's 9.8, 9.8, Seven or 9.88. Now I need to take a photo. Yeah. So the next measurement we need is the forestay length. So what we need to do is all these fish and butterflies. Um, so the thing, next thing we need to do, let's get my tape measure out of the water, is to tie the tape measure onto that knot because as we pull it up, that's going to hit the sheave. Um, and give us an indicator. Actually, no, I'll put it on here because the distance from the sheave to the um, stay lock fitting on the forestay is about that distance. So now we're just going to pull this up. Um, so, Wendy, can you do that? Uh, measuring the length from the water to the bottommost part of the uh, fourth bank. It'll be an average because we're bobbing around a bit today. Oh yeah. How on earth are you going to measure that? If you get off the tape measure, it'll be a lot easier. <laughs> We've also picked one of the hottest days of the year. It is stinking. It's about 120% humidity and um, zero wind. But we need zero wind, so anyway, one sail down, three to go. So we've done the head saw. Now we've got all the same stuff for the stay saw. But this time, because we've already got the furler fitted, we've got some other bits and pieces to measure in to the equation. Um, the furler for the head saw is at home. So what I'll, I'll do is I'll assemble it at home and we'll get these measurements for the head saw one uh, once we get back there. We're measuring the all the measurements for the stay sail. Okay. I'm just measuring this bit. Well this bit, what's this bit called? That's the tall bit there down to this bit under the blue bit. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see measuring the I'm measuring the furler um, vertical height. Very good. Measuring the leech, 8.8. .8. I'll come and get a photo. That one's done. Right, the next one we need is number five, which is the length from there to the center line of the mast. Which one are you doing now? Doing the mainsail measurements. 
Fnaf and Leech. So you put an extra line on so it doesn't stretch tape measure? Just so that when we're pulling it back down, it's because a lot of weight in it, we're not stretching the tape measure yet. Correct the window. What are we up to now? Uh, the mizzen, lucky last. Some of you remember a few months ago, the gearbox heat exchanger sprung a leak and we ended up with salt water in the gearbox. Well, the new one's just arrived. I've got some new fittings for it, so time to put it in. I'm gonna use one of my favorite little um, little bits of kit to hold these, these um, uh, what are they called again? Barbs in. 90 degree barbs, um, the old stag joining paste. It's absolutely awesome for this sort of work. There you go, that's about how much you need. And you just screw it in. There we go, final result. Squeezed out nicely. So do the other one up and we're done. There we go, heat exchanger ready to bolt in. So just replacing the hoses as well. You can never be too short. Right, oh, she's all back in. Let's excuse my cable tie here because uh, I didn't have my bolt box with me. So when I come back on board after work, I'll uh, replace this with a bolt. But there she is, all back in, all tested, all works well. Good to go again. <laughs>